This video is about red eye. There are many causes of red eye. You can think about them according to the different structures as shown here. But for your purpose, try to remember the common ones and the sight threatening ones. So on the white part of the eye, that is the conjunctiva and sclera, you have acute conjunctivitis, dry eye and blepharitis, subconjunctival hemorrhage, episcleritis, and anterior scleritis. Now notice that episcleritis is quite common affecting the superficial layer, and that is the episclera, and also is mostly idiopathic. Whereas for anterior scleritis, it involves a deeper layer, the sclera, and classically, it is described as having a deep boring pain of the eye that wakes the patient up in the morning, and the eye might have associated complications such as raising chakra pressure or even a posterior scleritis. There is a high chance of an associated systemic condition and you need to make an ophthalmology referral. On the cornea, you have uh, infections of the cornea, that uh, is what we call the keratitis, cornea ulcer, cornea abrasion, foreign body, and also other ocular trauma. Now, if you like, in the inside of the eye, you have uh, acute primary angle closure, uveitis, and also endophthalmitis. Other rarer uh, type of uveitis could also happen in the eye. Now, just a bit of extra information. Dry eye and blepharitis, uh, that is the inflammation of the eyelid, is actually quite common, uh, particularly for patients with rheumatoid arthritis, uh, severe dry eye is possible. Thyroid eye disease can also lead to red eye, and we will come to that uh, later on in other videos. Apart from acute conjunctivitis, subconjunctival hemorrhage, and episcleritis, other diseases listed here are actually potentially sight-threatening. Dry eye can also be potentially sight-threatening in severe cases. So, for your purpose, the non-sight-threatening conditions are self-limiting and could be treated conservatively. However, I want you to be careful when you encounter these warning signs. They are severe visual loss, severe pain, and also photophobia. Refer them to ophthalmologists in those cases. Photophobia is quite important and it could be quite specific. It usually implies cornea or uveal tissue involvement, even for severe dry eye that causes what we call punctate epithelial erosion, PEE. This is a sort of micro erosions of the cornea epithelium. The patient could also experience photophobia. Patients with uveitis could also have photophobia. The painful sensation comes about because the light source causes movement of an inflamed iris. Now we will mainly focus on acute primary enclosure, cornea infection, endophthalmitis, and uveitis. For acute primary angle closure, the classical presentation is a mid to old age patient presented with a unilateral acute visual loss, seeing halo with a painful red eye, headache to an extent of causing nausea and vomiting. The symptoms actually implied an acute elevation of intraocular pressure, so it could happen in other conditions as well, such as phacomorphic glaucoma, anterior uveitis. These conditions also cause acute elevation of intraocular pressure. Risk factors include hyperopia, that is long sightedness, and also family history. Now, prior to the symptoms, patient might have pupil dilated for eye checkup or taken some cold medication. Those might trigger an angle closure attack. Even without the slit lamp, you might still be able to see a mid dilated pupil that is poorly reactive to light, cornea edema, that is the cornea looks more opaque compared with the fellow unaffected eye, and ciliary injection. With the slit lamp, you could see cells and flares in a narrow anterior chamber and a bulky lens. The cornea edema is the reason why the patient sees halo. If you don't have equipment to check the eye pressure, try to palpate the eye with both of your index fingers, one eye after another. The affected side will feel harder than the normal side. For the management, you could refer for an urgent ophthalmologist consultation. Measure the intraocular pressure if you could. They usually have a, what we call a tonal pan available in the A&E department for you to do that. You can also try the following, including medical abortion of the attack. You can give patients pilocarpine eye drops, systemic acetylcholamide either by oral or intravenous, other intraocular pressure lowering eye drops, and also topical steroid. 
The ophthalmologist could also perform laser iridotomy, LPI, or argon laser peripheral iridoplasty, ALPI. The definitive treatment is lens or cataract extraction. Let's talk about the cornea. With cornea involvement, there is usually blur vision and photophobia. It is also painful and there might be discharge. You must know cornea infection or what we call infective keratitis. If it involves a deeper part of the cornea known as a stroma and causes an erosion, then it is known as cornea ulcer. It is painful, blurry, usually involves the central part of the cornea. You should ask about history of trauma, foreign body, and history of contact lens use. If your patient uses contact lens, try to dig out some of the risky behavior, such as prolonged use of contact lens, say for example, more than 10 hours a day, seven days a week, overnight use, wearing contact lens during sleep, shower, swim, poor techniques of looking after the contact lens, or the use of color contact lens. Daily disposable contact lens may be less risky. Be careful with patients who are children and adolescents uh, who uses what we call the OK lens, that is the orthokeratology lens. These are corrective contact lens that they wear at, during sleep. So uh, children who are not very good at looking after the lens uh, might be at risk of having keratitis. Pseudomonas aeruginosa is the common cause of contact lens related keratitis and uh, encephamoeba is an important cause of contact lens keratitis. Remember them. What you should do is to refer the patient to ophthalmologist as soon as possible. Ask the patient to stop using the contact lens. Ophthalmologists will perform cornea scraping and send the specimen, including the uh, contact lens and also contact lens cases if they are available, for microscopy and culture. Then start on intensive broad spectrum empirical topical antibiotics and will adjust the treatment according to clinical response and also the culture results. You should also know about herpes simplex keratitis. It's a big topic and I won't go into details. Basically, the virus spread from infected epithelial cell and stay in the trigeminal ganglion during the latent state. Reactivation comes and that can affect different layers of the cornea. This is a classical photo of hepatic epithelial keratitis, what we call dendritic ulcer, just like the dendrite of the nerve with the synapses. Symptoms include eye pain, red eye, blurry vision, tearing, discharge, and also photophobia. Now there are two key points that I would like to make. First of all, because it involves the trigeminal nerve, it is not that painful. In fact, one of the diagnostic tests is to check for a reduced cornea reflex and sensation. The patient may present with some mild symptoms, say for example, having some sort of um, foreign body sensation, some photophobia and tearing, and perhaps a bit of a blurry vision, and that's it. You could mistake that as something not that alarming. Secondly, because of the mild symptoms, some patients just like to avoid seeing doctors so they get some over-the-counter medication. Now, if the eye drops happen to contain any kind of steroid, it could make things worse because that encourages the virus to spread, lead to what we call a geographic ulcer. Basically, the branches of the dendrite merge together. Anaphomitis is uncommon but devastating. That means the infection involves the inside of the eye. It could be exogenous or endogenous. Exogenous basically means that there is an obvious infective source from the eye, for instance, cornea ulcer or after intraocular surgery. Endogenous is probably more relevant to you. It means that the infective source is outside of the eye, say for example, a liver abscess. So you need to do a septic workup for your patient. We will talk about other red eyes in another video. Finally, I would like to draw your attention to uveitis. Patients with anterior uveitis classically present with some red eye, photophobia, and also blur vision. Now, the red eye is not that red. It's what we call ciliary injection. It's like an injection along the limbus. Classically, a patient comes to us after being treated for viral conjunctivitis uh, with antibiotics without much improvement. Now, anterior uveitis is confirmed if we see anterior chamber cell during the slit lamp examination. 
and it might also be related to other systemic disease such as ankylosing spondylitis. In fact, um, for ankylosing spondylitis, it could be the first presentation uh, and usually have quite severe anterior uveitis. So, in certain condition, you will need to do systemic workup for patients with anterior uveitis. And that's it. I hope this helped. Bye bye.